Virtual Reality is not a noob-friendly game. As someone who's played the game for years, I know this all too well. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you everything you need to know to successfully play your first ever PR round without thoroughly embarrassing yourself. Let's get started. Project Reality is a standalone mod. While it was originally built for Battlefield 2, Battlefield 2 is no longer required. To download the mod, begin by liking the video and subscribing. Once you've done that, head on over to realitymod.com forward slash downloads. Select your download option of choice and download the game. Unzip the download and run the setup installer. Definitely read all the terms and conditions and hit next a bunch of times. Once that's done, open the launcher, complete the install and link your Steam account. Once that's done, you'll be able to make your PR profile. Keep in mind, servers will ban you for having inappropriate names, so make sure it's funny, but not too funny. Select your new profile and hit play. You're now able to play Project Reality. Congratulations. But wait, while we've got the launcher open, let's go over some basic settings. All graphic settings are changed via the launcher, not in-game. So make sure you've got appropriate settings for your system. To put it simply, if you have a decent rig, you'll be able to run high settings, no problem. These settings at the bottom of the graphic settings are a great place to gain some frames if you're struggling. Lowering these sliders and unticking everything improves performance. Under global, you can turn off intro movies if you don't want to see them every time you open the game. PR Mumble is the voice program used in Project Reality, which allows you to talk to everyone in local, squad radio and squad leader radio using a microphone. This tab allows you to set up your key bindings. Local speech is how you talk to people standing nearby. Squad radio is used to communicate to all members of your squad regardless of distance. All squad leaders is to talk to every squad leader in the game. Commander is to talk exclusively to your commander and the various specific squad leader options are to talk to specific squad leaders. In game, each squad has a number between one and nine. Pressing the numbers on your numpad allows you to talk to a specific squad leader. An additional button that I like to add is mute speakers. This allows you to temporarily mute all mumble communications, which proves particularly useful at the end of the round when everyone enjoys a good mic spam. Nice. The mute button coming in absolutely clutch. If this option is not here for you, open PR Mumble, click Configure, Settings, Shortcuts, Add, Deaf and Self. If you ever have an issue with Mumble while in-game, it can be opened and closed via the system tray down here. Mumble will always automatically open and put you in the right channels. If you close it mid-game, it will open again by itself. The off and on again method can be used to fix most Mumble problems. From the launcher, you also have direct access to the PR manual. In game, when new players ask a question about the game, any veteran arsehole worth their salt will reply to you not with the answer, but instead to read the manual. For reference, the manual is here and looks like this. No, I'm not surprised you didn't bother reading it, but for the record, there's some great information in there. Right, let's open the game. There are three ways of playing Project Reality, by yourself, with other players against bots, and with other players against other players. To play by yourself, rather confusingly, click multiplayer, then create local. Here you can see every map and every map player currently in the game. Add a map, then hit deploy. This is a great way to test your graphic settings and make sure the basic key bindings and audio are sorted. You can change in-game key bindings by hitting escape, then navigating to options, controls. From here, if you feel you're not ready to play against other human players, you can jump into co-op. By selecting cooperative, you can choose to make a local game with you against bots, or join an online server with you and some other players against bots. This can be a great place to train prior to going to PvP, especially if you've never played a game like this before. In co-op, you can learn the game and talk with other players without the immense pressure of 90 veterans breathing down your neck, critiquing your every move. <laughs> to play multiplayer against other players, hit multiplayer, join internet, update list. From here, you'll see the available servers. To join a server, either double click on it or select it and click deploy. If the server you want to join is full, select it, click server info, auto deploy. Then type in the number that would make that server full. In most cases, this would be 100. If there's a number in these brackets, those are reserved slots. Minus that number from 100 to get the full server number. This will try and join you to the server 
roughly every five seconds. Worth noting, you need to have the game open while you do this. Minimizing the game will pause the process until you open it again. You've successfully joined a server. Now all you need to do is learn how to play the bloody game. There are two main game modes in Project Reality, AAS and Insurgency. AAS, often referred to as ASS, is your classic sequential flag conquest, where each team has a set number of tickets, the loser being the team that runs out of tickets first. In PR, tickets in AAS are only lost, never gained, and are lost by dying, losing vehicles, and losing flags. Additionally, if the enemy team captures all your flags, your tickets will bleed until you cap a flag again. Flags are capped in a certain order. This blue shield thing represents the current capable flag your team are defending. This orange shield thing represents the current capable flag your team are attacking. Is that while it is possible to go to other flags, you cannot capture them if they do not have this weird shield thing on them. Insurgency is the superior game mode and the one you won't find in any other game, except in squad, but over there, it's absolute piss. Oh, very nice. In Insurgency, the blue four team is trying to destroy enemy caches. The op four team is trying to defend them. Each map has a set number of caches that need to be destroyed. Oh my God. There are only ever two caches on the map at any one time. Additionally, Blue 4 have tickets, Op 4 do not. The trade-off is that Blue 4 often have the superior firepower, including scopes on their weapons and armored vehicles. Some of the newer insurgency maps don't give Blue 4 scopes and have a more balanced armor spread between both teams. This is why these are the worst insurgency maps in the game. Devs, please fix this. As Blue 4, caches look like a red diamond on the map, but only give a rough position of where the cache actually is. On Op 4, a cache appears in two forms, as a blue diamond and a purple shield. This is to differentiate between what is a known cache and an unknown cache. Confusingly, especially if you understand AAS, the purple shield thing is the unknown. The blue diamond is the known. The known cache is visible on the Blue 4's map. The unknown is not. As Blue 4 get more kills, they build up their intel points. When they have enough, an unknown cache will become known. If Blue 4 kills civilians, they will lose intel points, the civilian being a playable class for the Op 4. A cache looks like this and requires a C4 to destroy it. Op 4 can resupply off of caches and on some factions can also request kits from here. But wait, I hear you. What the bloody hell are kits? In Project Reality, there are a number of classes. These are referred to as kits because they look like this and can be picked up off the ground by pressing G. To request a kit, go over to a friendly supply crate or APC, hold T and left click. Here, you will see a list of all available kits, a list that is the same across all factions, although what the kits provide varies. Like any normal person, each kit has its limits and can only be requested when certain squad and team-based parameters are met. Here are those parameters. Each kit also has a standard and alternative version the ult usually being the unscoped version of the standard kit. You can pick up friendly and enemy kits, but holding an enemy kit for longer than a few seconds will turn your screen black and mercilessly kill you. To drop a kit, hold T and right click the center of the screen. Once you've successfully requested a kit, there is a cooldown before you can request one again. A number of the requestable kits you can also spawn with via the spawn screen kit menu. From this menu, you can get a clearer picture of what each kit has. But how do you even spawn? In Project Reality, almost all available spawn points will be built by players in the game. An available spawn point looks like a gray circle and usually comes in the form of main base, fobs, and rally points. The main base is your main base, cannot be attacked, and is where most of your stuff spawns. A fob is a forward team-wide spawn point buildable by squad leaders. To build one, a squad leader requires one large crate or two small ones. Crates are delivered via logi truck, transport truck, or helicopter. Fobs are built using shovels. More shovel equals more fast build. A fob remains active as long as two enemies are not nearby or it is not destroyed. A rally point is a spawn point squad leaders can deploy for their squad only and appears as a green number on the map. Now that's all out of the way, I think it's time to play your first game. At the start of any round, a number of squads will be created and will usually be named appropriately. 
specific server rules determine naming conventions, but essentially the first squad to make the tank squad gets tanks, first cast squad gets all the close air support vehicles, and any squad with inf in the title is a dedicated infantry squad. As a new player, I would highly recommend joining an infantry squad. The general way your standard infantry squad is done is that you'll join, ask your squad leader what they're after, and follow their orders. However, as a new player still learning the ropes, I'd volunteer yourself as one of the squad medics. You'll often hear people suggesting a new player should take a rifleman kit. This is because it's the most basic kit, it's unlimited, and generally lacks responsibility. And while this may be low pressure, I think it's a very poor way to learn the game. The beauty of the medic is that every squad needs one. No one wants to do it. You have a clearly defined role and you'll be learning both game mechanics and communication mechanics. With this in mind, here comes the best medic tutorial you've ever seen that will turn you into that Spider-Man guy who saved people on a big hill. The primary goal of the medic, that's you, is to revive and heal as many players as possible while simultaneously being alive for as long as possible. With this in mind, as the medic, you shouldn't be leading the charge, you shouldn't be the first person round a blind corner, and you shouldn't be the first responder to a gunfight. You should, however, always be looking for the best cover, playing safer than everyone else, and keeping a close eye on the map, paying particular attention to the positions of your fellow squad members. Oh, don't do it! You got so much to live- No! Shit! The medic has a number of valuable tools at their disposal. Creepy pedo hands, a med bag, nine epipens, five smoke grenades, and five patches. You will likely be using all of these in combination every round. A basic revive will go like this. A squad member will die. Right, slow, just, slow, just pick me up. Thanks. No, please! Oh. oh! They will appear as a red revive symbol on the map. This symbol disappears, so make note of the location when you see it. If you want to see the symbol again, ask the down player to call out on the map. For the down player, this means right clicking on this button to call for a medic. When you've established their location, oh my god, three of you just died, what are you doing? Make it clear to the squad that you're on the way to revive the guy. Otherwise, your squad leader will think you're doing nothing and yell at you. When you see the player, use Mumble to talk to them on local and ask what killed them. This is important, as if they were killed by a tank, the smokes you're about to throw will do nothing against the tank's thermals and will get you killed. Assuming you think a revive is possible, begin by throwing a couple of smoke grenades if necessary. Once the smoke is up, sprint over, prone on the body and jab the epipen into center of mass. If you need the player to move when they get up, direct them using a compass direction prior to reviving them. Once you've revived them, they still need to be healed. Switch to the med bag and hold left click to heal them. When left click no longer does anything, they're fully healed and good to go. Obviously, each situation is different and things won't always go this smoothly. Yeah, yeah, behind the train tracks, behind the train tracks. Don't run them over. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> Let's get crushed right <laughs> there. <laughs> Here are some important further medic tips to elevate your revive game. A freshly revived player cannot sprint and cannot see very well. Keep this in mind when making a revive. In PR, there is dead, and then there is dead dead. If a player reports as being dead dead, they are not revivable. If you are unsure whether a player is dead dead or not, try dragging their body with the creepy pedo hands. If the body does not move, they are not revivable. Following a revive, if the same player is killed again within two minutes, they will be dead dead and no longer revivable. The medic cannot heal themselves. Use patches to heal yourself or drop your kit for a friendly to pick up and use your own med bag on you. Players in need of healing will appear as a red cross on the map if they call for a medic by holding down Q and selecting medic. Players can be healed through walls by sticking their legs through them. Dragging players costs stamina. If you have no stamina, no dragon can take place. If a player is revivable but EpiPens aren't working, try dragging their body a bit and trying again. If that doesn't work, try stabbing their kit instead. If you can master the medic, I guarantee you there isn't a single squad in PR that won't want you in it. And just like that, you've played your first round. How'd it go? Let me know in the comments down below. This tutorial has only scratched the surface of what is possible in PR. If you'd like other tutorials regarding specific roles, maps, game modes, or anything else, let me know. If you haven't already, 
like and subscribe. I hope you understand that if this was ever a toss up between reviving you and an active subscriber, you better believe I'm dragging the subscriber to safety and leaving you in the dust. Other than that, all the best and I hope to see you in the next one.